praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for allowing us to be here another time. As we come together today, we will continue our discussion that we are having. We are having a discussion on the family. We are talking about um, relationship, husband and wife relationship. And I think today will be the last Sunday we are dealing with the issues of men. We're dealing with the issues of um, black men. We're talking about the hard truth that uh, in regards to black men and these hard truths are coming from um, black women. Things that they look and they see in the life of us as black men that they need to be corrected. So um, we dealt with that a uh, few weeks. So I'm trying to make this the last week that we're going to deal with these hard truths. I know probably there's a lot more that we could add, but uh, we will bring it, try to bring it to an end today. And next week, we pick up again. Uh, I guess we'll get into the more important part, dealing with the ladies. Praise the Lord. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here as we come together today, Lord, for a time of studying and discussion as we deal with the subject of the family, uh, marriage relationship, relationship between husband and wife. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be in our midst pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Our eyes and our ears will be open. And Lord, you'll make yourself known to us. Those who are on their way, pray that you'll hasten their step. Bring them safely so that we can congregate together to receive your blessings from your hands. Bless us throughout this time, we pray. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. All right. So, we have, uh, as we continue in our discussion, uh, uh, these ladies, what they are saying is that uh, black men seem... Um, I think I, I'm missing one. Mm. Okay, yes. Black men don't trust their women. This is what um, some of these ladies are saying, that um, we as black men, we don't trust our women. And I think in one of the discussions we had um, uh, previously, we talked about um, growing up in the Caribbean, we, most of us as men, we grew up hearing our elders making statement that you can't trust women. And uh, a lot of us, we grew up hearing that, that we can't trust women. And many of us as men, we don't leave that behind. It seems as though we, we, we take it along with us. I'm not saying all of us, but a lot of men, you know, that thing that they hear from way back that you can't trust women, they don't really leave it behind. And even in their personal relationship, now they tend to, to have that with them. And, you know, they're more or less like they, 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 they're keeping an eye on their wife or their woman, the woman in their life, and they don't really fully trust them. But that is something that we have to leave behind because, you know, you know because growing up in the islands, growing up in St. Vincent, the impression that you get from um, our elders is that as soon as the man leaves and he goes to work, uh, some man is going to step in and the woman is going to be in a relationship with this some man because of the fact that she, he's not at home. That's the kind of impression that they give us. As, you know, women, um, you can't, they, they can't be trusted. But th that's not the truth. I'm not saying, you know, there, there are some women out there who live loose lives. But most women out there are respectable people. They are respectable and they are committed to um, their relationship but you know it's just that some men have these bad feelings and bad attitude and you know things within them their mindset is bad and uh, they, they they see women in that kind of light but I, I believe that you know most women are very faithful and very honest in in their relationship and you know if we have that kind of mindset if you are if you're, in, if you're in your relationship with your wife or whoever you're with and you're showing them that you don't trust them, it's not a good thing. Um, yes, sister. Um, give her the mic. Okay, pastor. Yes. You know, men think that about women, but you know something? I, what I was saying, the, how the old people are saying, when a dog sucking bone, uh -huh. he think that you sucking bone too. So I think that's the way men think because they going out there and suck the bone, so they think we sucking the bone too. 
Uh huh. <laughs> that is that. Okay, that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is that is very <laughs> that is hard hitting and uh, and uh, I, I think there's a point there because of the fact that you know um, men they are unfaithful and they tend to be the one who stray and tend to be the one who um, become unfaithful according to what she's saying because of the fact that they're doing it they're assuming that the same thing is happening um, with the the woman. And it is quite true. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think that because you can be at a woman's side or a woman can be at a man's side 24-7, mm -hmm. then trust shouldn't be an issue. Trust should not be an issue because women have their own mind. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do what they want to do. Right. They're going to do what they want to do. Right. And the thing is, what I could say, let me say for myself, I trust my wife. Right. I have always trusted her. Right. Because when she goes to the store, I don't go with her. And wherever she goes, I don't, be, I don't, I don't. Well, you can't, Most of the time. You can't be with her all the time. So it, 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 it shouldn't have something that you call trust or not trust between husband and wife. It, it, it really shouldn't be. Well, it's you know? there. It, it shouldn't, but it's, it's there. And a lot of men are very suspicious, you know, because whether we want to admit it, yes or no, most of us are, as men, we are very jealous. We are very jealous. And jealousy is not really a bad thing, but sometimes you have to be careful that you don't become over jealous and there is no reason there for you be, to become jealous. Because when a man becomes jealous is when he is protective of something that he loves. The word jealousy has to do with when somebody will go to any length to protect the thing that they love, the thing that they cherish. And... Uh, we, all of us as husbands, we're supposed to be jealous of our wife in the sense that we want to protect her and we want to keep her for ourselves. But we, we have to be careful that we don't cross the line. When you start to become suspicious of her and stuff like that, that is um, crossing the line. And we have to look at the other side too. You know, as we talk about um, men being suspicious and stuff like that, we have to look at the other side and we have to talk about, you know, some women, they, you know, they provide opportunity for men to become suspicious. And uh, ladies, you have to be careful that you don't give your husband opportunity to become suspicious of you. You know, for instance, if you and your husband going out, for instance, or you're traveling, wherever, and you meet an old friend on the street, somebody that you know for a long time, there's nothing between the both of you. But it's not a good thing for you to park your husband aside and, you know, go on talking to that man. That's not, that's not wisdom. If you're going to talk to him, you have to go together with your husband. And inter if, he, if your husband don't know him, you introduce your husband to him and, you know, you have a conversation. Or maybe you just say hi or you just wave to him and you go your way. But some women, they have this attitude, they will park their husband Put him stand up there and he waiting and you talking. Well, I, no man can, no man will have the guts to do me that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pardon? Pastor Duncan, I don't think there's anything wrong with, um, like if you meet an old friend, you stick up and talk to them. Because if it's my husband meet an old friend and, and stay and talk, I wouldn't find it a problem. It's an old friend. What you're supposed to do, just say hi and then pass straight. And we're talking so, about... We're like, talking if you want to, like, catch up with the person. We're talking about you, if you and Brother Cole going out somewhere and you meet an old friend, you I know, a, a guy that wrong. you know from way back, would you just park him aside, he stand up over there waiting on you and both of you over here in conversation, you know, and you think, you think he's going to... Are you going to satisfy that, brother? Right. Would you satisfy with that? Your wife, you and your wife going out and she park your side... 
okay, so you're not gonna stand up. The you're distance not. between us will tell her that it's time for her to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think there's anything wrong. Uh, it, yes, there's something wrong. There, there, there's something wrong there. There's a, you know, if you and your husband is going out somewhere, and you both of you walking on the street or whatever, and you meet an old friend, it's not a good practice. It's not a good practice. Common sense will tell you that. It's not a good practice for you to park him aside or let him go on and the both of you, you and this guy stand up in conversation. Uh, what I'm saying is that the best thing to do um, is to take your husband across, say, uh, um, John or Joe, this is this person, we know each other for a long time and you need to juice for him and you, need, you both of you, you know, you talk to him and your husband stand up there. You know, that is, that is how, you know, I think people should do things so that they don't cause suspicion because as I said before, ladies, you have to understand, men, we as men, we're very suspicious and we're very jealous. Even though things not going on and you give us any kind of ammunition, any kind of, a, it's like you're planting seeds, you know, <laughs> seeds of doubts, very easy to grow in a man's mind. Ladies, you might be different, but men mind very easy to, to, to yeah, to wonder. So instead of giving them opportunity to wonder, you don't give them that. You don't do things like that. Go ahead. talk to a friend. All right. Men cannot be more suspicious more than women. Okay. And men give women more reason to suspect them now than a woman give them reason to suspect them. Well, so, well, well, that's, well, that's what we're saying. On both sides, both sides of the fence, um, to have a good relationship, you don't give your husband reason to suspect you, and wife don't give husband reason to suspect them. So in a case like that, I think we have to just use wisdom, and I will say, you know, introduce the guy to your husband. Yes, sir. Yes. How would you go about catching up with an old friend? Catch up, uh, you mean uh, like uh, a, a woman? It doesn't matter. Whether woman, man, it doesn't matter. No, well, well, as I said, just like how I explained to you there, if I meet somebody on the street, if I meet some, if I, if I have a friend that I haven't seen for a long time, and I meet them on the street, and it's me and my wife, um, I'm not going to put her aside and go and talk to that person. Yeah, the both of us... Won't you in the back of your mind or something, won't you want to catch up with that person somehow? You, would you prefer that after your wife gone or some later time that you catch up with them one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, well, if, I, if, if it happened that I have to catch up with them one-on-one, -on -one, it's okay. But what I'm saying, at that time, at that time while my wife is there, I'm not going to park her on the street and you know, leave her and go off talking to this person for no long period of time. I'm going to do it in this way. This is the way I'll do it. I was going to take my wife over and I introduced them. And then we stand up and we talk. If we stand up, we talk for five minutes or whatever, and then we're gone. You know, um, if we have to make an appointment to meet each other to talk, well, it's different. But what I'm saying, um, I, I, I don't think that's a good practice uh, to leave the person there and, and do that. Some people might satisfy with that, but in my book, that is a no-no. <laughs> that is a no-no. Okay. Um, we're talking about, you know, giving opportunities in that kind of case. Um, ladies, you have to be careful. You have to be careful that you don't get yourself involved. There are some women get themselves involved in uh, these kind of a vulgar conversation with men. Talk these vulgarness with men and, you know, and uh, they have uh, vulgar conversation going on with men. And even though you and this person may not have anything going it's not a, that's not a good practice. You know, as a, a married woman, you know, you're not supposed to be involved in vulgar talk. You know, talks that relate to sex and stuff like that. You know, with, with other men, you know, on the job or wherever. Because when you start talking vulgar talk with a man, ladies, you have to understand how man is. I, th I don't think some women understand how the mind of men works. Anytime you, anytime you open the door, Anytime you start talking vulgar talk to a man, the man get the impression that you open the door and what you're saying to him, come on in. That's what you're saying. You're saying, come on in. So it's, it's not a good practice to um, involve in, in any kind of the, these kind of talks with, you know, with men. And some, some women delight in these kind of things. 
And as Christian people, we're not supposed to do that because I know a lot of that goes on on the job. You know, people, because your husband not there. Yeah. Harry's not there. So, you know, you, uh, or your wife is not there or whatever. But it's, listen, I, um, we're talking about vice versa. It could happen both ways. It's not, it's, we're not supposed to do these things. And I, that's what I'm saying. We suppose, sometimes we're afraid to talk about these things. And sometimes we say, well, these things will happen in a uh, relationship, in Christian relationship. It happens. It's happening in Christian relationship. And that's the reason why we need to talk about these things. And uh, another thing again, some women, they take pride and say, oh, you know, my best friend is a man. And I don't have no best friend women. My best friend is a man. You, but listen, men are very jealous. And if you, your best friend is a man, it's not a good thing. I don't see that as, as a good thing. I don't want, I really don't want my wife, her best friend is a man. What happened when me and she, me and she, my, me and my wife home relaxing and we're talking and watching television or whatever. We may be trying to get something romantic going and your best friend call you up and then you have to interrupt, you know, the both of us and all you in conversation. No, I don't want my wife. If, if, if John satisfied that his wife, best friend is a man, it's quite okay. But personally as a man, I don't want my best, my wife, best friend to be no man. Go ahead. Um, you, you don't think um, because of that situation, um, it can cause, um, it, it should be, but it will cause a further resistance, right? With both individual. That um, it will cause you to withdraw. Who will, will withdraw? Both sides can withdraw because of, um, no. For instance, I can talk to myself. If I um, probably um, talk to somebody, mm -hmm. right? My wife might say, well, um, why are you talking? Uh, why are, are you looking at that person? Uh, for instance, if somebody um, comes and... <laughs> you know, you, you, you look at, you, you look at too long. Right, <laughs> I, I look too long. <laughs> if somebody comes and I, I go to the door to close the door and think, and you pass, you left them pass it. Where you looking there? Where you looking there? You I know. know what I mean? And things like that. So then, with, with, um, with you have a, a, a pure motive. You ain't, mm. you ain't th thinking anything. But when that kind of thing comes in, it causes you, if we're not careful, mm -hmm. it will cause us to withdraw mm -hmm. from people instead of freely, you know, reaching out to people or uh, having a, a true friendship with people. You see, well, I think, uh, I hope you, nobody, I hope you guys don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that a woman is not supposed to have a man friend. No, I'm not. Okay? We're not saying that a woman can have a man friend. But some women, they, they, they just tell you, well, I don't have no best friend, girlfriend. Some women don't have best friend, girlfriend. They're, they're best friend. They like to hang out with guys and they want to have a best friend as men. But what, what I'm saying is that when you have a, a husband in your life, when you have a man in your life, it don't, it don't really go down good with him. Right. It doesn't really go down good. Yes. Well, <laughs> well. Because um, the husband met that person with that friend. Are they supposed to drop the friend because they're knowing that relationship? Or well, I, I, I do they set um, their boundaries? Well, yes, you could set boundaries. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, um, if you're single yeah, you and you have uh, this guy who is your best friend before you have a, a permanent man or husband in your life, you might have to curtail. You might have to, you might have to curtail you know, some of the, the things that goes on between you and this best friend. Because... Go ahead, sir. What are yes, you doing? Pastor, but this best friend thing is a double edged sword because a lot of relationships. Is a what? Double edged sword. Okay. Because if you're saying you don't want your wife to have a best friend. No, I didn't say that. As a man, a man best friend. A right. male best friend, I should say. Sorry. Mm. But there's a lot of relationships where the female best friend end up with the best friend's husband. Well, all that does happen too. Well, so it doesn't really matter which direction you take. Well, 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 well we, we're talking, at, listen. I'm not putting, you see, we no, have to understand. I'm not, going that route. I'm not I'm, putting it. You always to go to listen, the I'm putting it on both sides. 
and, and both sides, the man's side, the woman's side. You, 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 you had to... You have to have limits and you have boundaries. to have boundaries. Boundaries is what's important there. Yes, That's you have to have I limits and you have to have boundaries. I don't think the gender is as important as the boundaries. Well, uh, you, you, you have to have boundaries and you, you, you have to have, you have to use wisdom when yes, you're dealing with so these I things. Don't think, I don't think the gender and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that we can't have um, friends of the opposite sex. I'm not saying that. But what we are saying, what we are saying to uh, avoid um, suspicion and to, 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 to avoid a conflict in the relationship. You have, to, you have to know what you're doing. And I'm not telling anybody what to do because, you know, I'm only up here giving advice, but it's up to you guys. You could do whatever you choose. But I'm telling you the way how I feel as a man, that is how I feel. Okay, we move on. Can I say something, Pastor? Pardon? Well, there is men who talk about woman logic, right? They say that women say they want their husband to be their best friend. Right. And when the best friend tried to date the woman, they said, she can't, I can't date you because you are my friend. So it's like if a woman have a best friend, they're not going to date the man because he's uh, their best friend. But if she have a husband, she want the husband to be the best friend. So mm. that's what they call woman logic. So I don't think a man should be worried when a woman have a man as a best friend because mm, well. if she was into that man, Pastor, she will never look at you. You don't think so, but that's that, what I know. That we are saying that what we are saying is that men men are very suspicious. Men are very jealous. Men are very jealous. Men are very suspicious. And whether or not we want to admit it, yes or no, that is that is how it is. And you know, even though something may not be happening in that relationship, and you know that nothing not happening. It's, some people might be able to accept it and deal with it, but some people can't handle it. Right. Some people can't handle it. So that's why, that's why I'm saying that we don't, want to, we don't want to provide any opportunity in the relationship for any kind of um, you know, um, contention. So therefore, you eliminate these things. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, all right. Um, what they're saying here is that black men doesn't love to take care of their wife, not just emotionally, but financially too. They're saying that we don't love taking care of our wives. My boss at work, white guy, he throw that in my face all the time. You black guys, you don't look after your wife. You don't take care of your woman. And, uh, he, you know, he, he, he said that all the time, that we don't... We know the way how they pamper their wife and they treat them good and stuff like that. What he said that we don't we don't do that. We don't we more rough and we, you know, we don't um, pamper them and we don't prize them and cherish them like how. Yeah, he talk he talk about that all the time in the office. And pardon, he don't lie. You know, here we have somebody saying he don't lie. So. So they, they, all right, okay, all right. They're saying that we don't, we don't um, cherish, and we don't pamper um, them, and not just uh, on the emotional side, but also financially. We don't look after them financially, and um, we have to, uh, we have to put this in here right now. As as a husband, it's my personal responsibility to look after every financial need that is in my home. Whether, whether my wife is working, yes or no. It is my responsibility. It's not my wife's responsibility to, to pay no mortgage. Right. Even though some of her money will eventually go towards paying the mortgage because the way how we set things up in my home, all of the money comes into my home going to one pot. That's right. But I don't, it's my responsibility. You know, if my wife's not working, you know, I don't have it like how some men have it. Oh, you have to pay the rent is what? The rent is a thousand, or the rent is twelve hundred. You had to pay six hundred when the month come, and he had to pay six hundred. And when the um, utility come in, you had to pay half. And this is craziness. It's craziness. And when you when you operate like that in your home, it's gonna lead to to confusion. It's going to lead to conflict. What, what happened when that person, the wife or whoever, not working? What's going to happen? And they can't come up with their part of the, the mortgage or that, their part of the rent. 
It's, you know, some people, you know, they, it causes conflict in the relationship when these things are going on. So as a man, as you supposed to, <laughs> as somebody, <laughs> I was talking to um, Brother Fraser yesterday, and he said that um, his pastor said that the man's supposed to run the home. And you're not supposed to run around the home. Your job is to run the home. And your job is not to run around the home and make circles around the home. It's to run the home. And I, I take that from him. We, our job is to run the home. And your job as a husband, you have to make sure that all of the financial needs of the home is being taken care of. As I said before, even though some of the wife's uh, money goes towards it once she's working, because as I said, all of the money is supposed to go into one pot. And uh, you have to look around. Even though the wife might be taking care of some of the bills, she might be going out and paying some utilities here and there. But when the month comes, as a man, you're supposed to be conscious and know that the home is not in the red. You know, there's no um, bounce check coming in. Everything is looked after. Everything is taken care of. That is what a real man is supposed to do where his home is concerned. And what we don't understand, when we um, establish this system where, you know, everybody had their own bank account and everybody look after this bill and look after that bill and stuff like that, we are creating division. problems, division in the relationship. And when we operate like that, um, we are creating distrust. We are planting seeds for distrust to develop in the relationship. You know why some women always think that the man holding out on them when money is concerned? If you have a wife that knows every cent that you have, she knows every cent that is in the bank account. Look at my, my I will have to use myself. In my, in my situation, I don't have no secret bank account. Every bank account that I have is me and my wife name on it. Every um, material thing that we have, the both of us have equal access to it. I don't have no secret bank account. Um, you know, when I go home, uh, in, uh, when I when my finish work, I go home, I put down my wallet. I don't have no secrets about it. If my wife wants something and she wants to take it out of my wallet, which rarely, rarely will happen. Most of the time, it's I who want to tell her that I want a $20. I is the one who most of the time run short and money and say, I need a $20 to buy gas. Um, Friday, I need money to buy gas. You know, and she always have money to give me to buy gas because I kind of, you know, maybe when I go in the bank, I'm I a little bit shy when I take out money. But when she go, like, she don't really shy. So she take out, you know, so she seems to, she always have enough. But my point is, in my case, I don't have no secret bank account. I don't have no off-limit account that my wife can go into. So when my wife, if she wants something or she sees the need for something in the home, and I say to her, oh, we can't afford it. But sometimes I don't even have to tell her we can't afford it because she already know that we, we can't afford it because she know what's in the bank. But most of the time when women get upset with men and start saying that we're hiding out on them and we cheat and start calling us names, is when they don't know what we have. They don't have access to the information. So therefore, when they come and they say, well, I want this. And sometimes you can't afford it. But because of the fact that they don't have access to it and they're not privy to what you have, all they could see is that you, you're lying and you have money and you don't want to give it to them because of the fact that they don't know what you have. But when they know that you have X amount, you know, they will live within their means. But we provide opportunity for them when we kind of have these secret account and half limit account and stuff like that. And it is causing um, separation and, and confusion we, we, we are creating our own problem when we operate in this kind of form. And especially a lot of us from the islands, most of us from the islands, you know, we never really know about this kind of thing. It was a one love kind of thing. In the islands, I don't know for now, but it was a one love kind of thing. Husband and wife, one love, and they have whatever. They don't have no secret bank account because you didn't have much money. So whatever you have, you have everything is together. But since we come here in this um, North American society and, you know, everybody wants to adopt Can Canadian lifestyle and everybody wants to have their own account and, you know, secret account and this kind of foolishness. Yes. And we want to adopt all the, the nasty North American lifestyle. 
we messing up ourselves. Are we messing up our family? Yes. And, uh, yes, sister, go ahead. Sir, um, some of the men are mean and greedy. You heard, you heard the star apple? Some of the men are star apple. Well, I, you know, well, that it's, that it's a fruit that's so selfish that okay. it don't fall. It stay apple. and it stay and dry up and take, keep to yourself because you want nobody to eat them. Right. Some men are like this. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't have much experience about the star apple, but <laughs> what she said is that <laughs> we're greedy and we all for ourselves. Okay. Okay, Pastor, you said in the Caribbean was one love kind of thing. Where did you get this one love kind of thing from? In the Caribbean, I grew up with women, two women fighting in the street, throwing up, scared, fighting, attacking, but you have the man, you have the ring, the money going here, the money going there. What? One love. Yeah, but... That, That's not um, the Caribbean thing. One love is... Caribbean sister, thing is like men having more than one woman, taking the money different places, and everybody still living in poverty. I think you missed the point what I'm talking about. I'm you not said talking about, account. You don't I'm see not, the account, Pastor. Sometimes... I'm not, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about womanizing kind of men. You always in every society you have womanizing kind of men. It have men here they don't womanize, they don't womanize. They don't have no um, outside women, but they 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 still cheap and they they still secretive where their bank account is concerned. Those are the men that we're talking about. Uh, and you guys have to be careful because when you run down some of these rabbit trails, <laughs> we know what to go along the rabbit trail. We're talking about. Um, people who um, have family and they're committed to their family. In this case, that is what we're talking about. But Pastor, you missed my point too. I am saying the majority of men back home, they do not take their money home. They either take the money to a rum shop or the money is divided. That's what I'm talking about. You don't know how much money. Sometimes a woman have to count the hours that the man make to know how much money that he make. Because he have different places that he take his money and his home is not run properly. That's the kind of home I grew up to. That's the kind of Caribbean I grew up to. But it probably have that too. It, it will have that. Not probably. It will have that. But most, I, I, most of the guys that I know uh, in, in my area, they were committed to their family. Yes, go ahead. Um, Pastor Duncan, yes, I know there, there were a few. There were a few men in the mm. Caribbean who were committed and will share their money. But most men that I heard of or mm. that I know, even in the church, they were the ones to split their money. They have their own account. Their wife have their own account. And wow. it's happening in the church. From way back when, I grew up in the church, and it's ever since I know, most men have their own account. Well, you see, you, you, you have in my age. In the Caribbean. Right? You have my age. So, you know, I probably, um, I'm two times older than you. So I'm talking about in my time. So well, well from what I lot. know. Things, things change a lot. Things change a lot. All right, okay, all right, we have, we have to move on. We don't want to stick there because, as I said, I, I was hoping that we will close up on the man section uh, this week. Okay, so um, what they say is that uh, the black men, they, um, they don't look after their women, okay? And uh, they financially, we are not taking our responsibility. We need to take our responsibility. We need to look after our women. We need to make sure that they don't have no added burden if you notice that your wife's straining with something financially you have to get in there as a husband and and and, and take the pressure off take the pressure off you know i personally i don't want my wife had no car bills paying for i said even though some of her money might go into the car bill but i don't want her when the month come around she had to think about oh i had to pay 900 dollars for car loan no i don't want that if you want to do that it's okay but i as a husband my wife wants a car. It's my responsibility. I go out, I take out, we shop around. She sees something that she likes. We buy it. If we have the money, we pay for it cash. Or if um, we don't have the money and I put it on the line of credit, when the time comes, when the month comes to pay, I go into the, the bank and I look after everything. She don't have no strain on her, even though, as I said, some of her money going towards paying because everything goes together. But she not by herself and she had to... Think about, oh, I had to pay, put some money in for the rent. And I had to put some money in for the um, car loan. Man, these things, uh, you're not supposed to have these things going on in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a relationship. Especially a married relationship. No man is supposed to be done together. Yes. Uh, um, well, you, you're giving solutions and ideas for fixing the problem. 
But okay. What, but what, what, what um, you think, um, did, did they give in this study, did they give um, solution to the problems? Solution to which problem? These sort of problems. Well, they, no, they didn't, uh, no, no, there's no solution. They, they don't give any solution. They, 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 they're talking about the um, faults and yeah, the bad the habits faults, right? that they see in men. And we here, we're just trying to trash out things to, to provide, well, that, you know, um, the answer to, well, that to, is what to I these say. things. You are, you are giving it, but um, they, they should look at the whole study and, and instead of just highlighting Mm -hmm. All the, the difficulties and all the faults should mm -hmm. be able to in, give some input into some of the solution or look and see what is the reason for this sort of problem among us. Because mm -hmm. it seems like this, this problem for me, mm -hmm. it would not stop because we are human beings. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we are fall human, sinful beings. Unless God really help us, okay. we, we, we weren't able to... Uh, okay, well, here, here, here the... Um Okay, you talk about solution. Well, I guess they, they give a little bit of solution here to that problem. He said, uh, black men uh, don't love to take care of their women. Um, okay, look, I read that already. The solution that they give here, a lot of black men come from broken home, homes and were raised by single mothers. They never saw a man helping their mother out financially. So they don't see why they should help their women out financially. To them, seeing a woman struggle is normal. They have that, my mother worked 15 jobs to make ends meet. Why can't you? Mentality. So what they, they said, this is the, well, as you said, you know, they, 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 they provide their own solution. They said that most, most uh, black men come from broken homes. And they always see their mother struggling and fighting to get stuff. They never see no committed uh, man in their mother's life helping her out financially. So they grow up with that kind of thing, that it's normal for a woman to struggle and to fight and to pay the bills and to figure out how things uh, have to be straightened out. They don't have no man to do it. So when they get into a relationship and get a wife, they carry that, that baggage, go along with them. But we're supposed to leave that behind. Listen, if, if your mother was living that kind of, in that kind of way, you can bring that into your relationship. Right. You can apply the same kind of a suffering that your mother go through and apply that um, to your wife. Uh, well, whoever, no, nobody at all. Some people, some people, the same example or the same kind of thing they see their parents go through. They expect to go through the same thing. Some, some women will tell you, well, you know, I don't believe in marriage because my mother never married. Or some men will say, my mother never married my father. So I am not going to marry any woman. You're a fool. Yeah. You know, if you, because your mother didn't marry it, or your father didn't marry it, or uh, even your father was treating your mother badly, and they were married, and you say, well, I ain't going to marry to no man because all men, they're dogs, and they, you know, they treat you in this <laughs> kind of way. You can't, you can't generalize. I know there are bad men out there, and there's a lot of bad men out there. And that's the reason why you have to be careful when you're picking one. Amen. You know, because there's a lot of bad men out there, but you can't say, well, you're not going to get committed in a relationship because uh, of the fact that your parents, your mother, you know, was suffering under your father or whatever. And a lot of people use these foolish um, kind of things, you know, because of the fact that they want to live in sin and they don't want to get their lives straight now. So if our mothers were suffering and they were struggling, um, our responsibility is to make it easier for our wives. Guys, you have to make it easy for your wife. That's, that's one little input. That is yes. why, as a young man growing up, um, I know um, my father used to drink a lot, and he was mm. a womanizer, right? He was the kind of fellow like that. And sometimes when he reached home, he done pass um, probably three different drum shop or mm. two different gambling hall. And when he come, nothing, but he expect to get food. Okay. And if he ain't eat the food, sometimes he'll kick down the pot or some kind of thing, yeah. And I watched that over the years and probably all my rest brothers and things. And we said to ourselves, we, we ain't want that kind of life. Okay. And because of that, we, we focus ourselves to achieve what my father didn't achieve for ourselves. Right. So to live a better life. So, okay. So, I'm, so if I'm, we go into that, it's bad for us. I'm trying to, trying to see if we could finish it up. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to rush it through. Um, 
Yeah, they said the, these ladies are saying black men seem just not able to get it together. Can we get it together? They're saying that we can't get our life together. Our life, um, we don't, it seems as though we don't have a plan and things, there's too much of loose ends in our lives. And it may not be all of us, but a lot of times you're looking in some guys' lives and you see that things not together. And uh, the reason why things doesn't come together, things can't come together if there's no plan. As men, we need to have plans. We, we, when you're doing anything, you have to plan it. You have to work it out. Jesus said if anybody going to do something, you're supposed to sit down and you have to think about it. You're going to build something, you have to think about how much it's going to cost, how long it's going to take you, and all of these kind of things. You plan it out. When you plan things, it's going to be successful. But a lot of times, we don't have no plans. And that's the reason why some, some men, their wife, can't respect them because they don't plan. Because if you have a, have a habit of not planning things and you're not doing things that turn out to be successful, your wife is not going to have a lot, of, a lot of respect for you. But if you're a man that think and you plan things and your wife see when you plan things, things work out, you know, she's going to respect you. And that's the reason why, again, some women, they always have to oppose everything men do. Because if you, as a man, you don't plan things and you don't, you're not successful in doing things, what else do you expect the woman to do? When you're doing foolishness, she had to oppose you. And she had to put up opposition. But if she know that, you know, when you, you, you use a man who you have a track record of planning things and doing things success, successfully, she's not going to oppose you. She's going she, she gonna to try to support you because she knows the kind of person you are. Go ahead, sis. Yes, they can. But sometimes what gets in the way is pride, ego, and a lot of ignorance. Okay? And there's a saying that all men are the same if thought the same thing. Because we, it, it, it's, if, if a man can get a plan together, it's how we as a woman go about helping them too. I mean, if you go about helping them dis defensively, a man is going to get defensive. And, and sometimes if you go about helping them in a tender way, sometimes the ego rise up. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it, 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 it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. We can't expect our black men to change over time. Mm. Because we're dealing with the problem. The problem is that it's, what we're dealing with is just the branches. It's not really the root. Because the root is really where the seed is planted. And if you notice, the black community is in disarray. And you're saying we're not talking about the womanizing. But the womanizing and, and, and the, the, the neglectfulness of the fathers and, and of the mothers of the children. We are all reaping that fruit today. That's the fruit that we are reaping. So we have to look at the circumstances and the circumstances for black men. We can't really blame them. We, we as the other part or the counterpart, like who knows better who grows up and who like evolve. We have to help those along the way. Like, you know. You can't blame them. So what, they innocent? No, they are not. But I am saying, Pastor, it's the circumstances in which you're real. I mean, if, if you have a, a garden, right, and you're weeding the, the, the weeds out, and you're watering, the garden is going to be beautiful. It's going to flourish. But if you just throw some seed there, and they grow up in wild grass, what do you expect? You expect nice flowers to come out from those grass? Maybe one might survive. So that if, one that, if that one survive, as a one black man who survive and who learn the values and how to treat women and the values of women or the values of a family, they are the ones who are supposed to help the other ones along. Well, it, it worked all the way wrong because um, uh, we, we touched on that uh, in a few lessons back. We talk about um, black women, have to, they have to play their part. You have to pick the man that you want. You, you have to... Women, I, I think... Women, they don't understand that. I don't think a lot of women know the kind of power that they have in their hands as a woman. You think that as a woman, you, you're supposed to pick the man that you want to be your, your man, be your husband. And, uh, you know, you, you have to, you have to, you have, you, you have the power in your, in your hand to pick the guy that you want. But a lot of these women, a lot of these women is bad, bad guys they want. They want the guy with the bad reputation and the guy who, you know, uh, in the community, everybody know about him, whatever. If these are the guys that um, a, a lot of these ladies want to hook up with. Yeah. And uh, they, 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 you have the opportunity to, to get the man that you want. And you as a woman, no woman, no wise woman should allow a man to go into bed with them before they get that man to commit themselves to her. 
uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a marriage relationship. You have the, the power. You have the authority. You have the authority when, because anytime a man coming around you, whether he's saying it yes or no, anytime a guy coming around a woman is one thing he's coming around for. And he may not say it, he might come around, oh, let, let me read the Bible, let me have prayer meeting or whatever. You know, he tell you about having prayer meeting and reading the Bible and stuff like that. But behind all of that prayer meeting and having Bible study and all of that, he, he's interested in you, interested in your body. And uh, you, you as a woman, you have to make sure that that don't happen. But a lot of these ladies, they tell us, well, if they give him the pie, <laughs> you know, um, yes, grape, well, okay, the grape. <laughs> Um, he's going to he's going to make a commitment to them, and they, they allow these guys to have sexual relationship with them, and then afterward they're trying to tell them, "Oh, getting married, getting married, what? What 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 kind of bargaining chips you have, <laughs> for lack of a better term? What do you have to 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 entice him? Some people, some women think that you know, if I, I let him um, have sexual relationship with me, I put him in the bag, I have him in the bag, he know how good I am and stuff like that. No, you let him out of the bag. You let him out of the bag. So uh, um, in, in a lot of cases, um, a lot of our women, they have to learn sense. They have to learn sense. As we say, they have to save sex for marriage. And in today's society, a lot of people don't believe in that anymore. Even some parents, they don't even believe in that anymore for their, their, their daughters. They're saying that is old-fashioned. Go ahead, sis. Some of the men, uh, it's true, as you were saying, um, Pastor, we, we women have to know um, the choice we make. Mm -hmm. Because some of us, we know that the men is no good. Right. And some of us in church, and we just let go to them. But they wouldn't marry to us if we just let go to them. We have to let them come in and make them dribble. Let them go down on their knees and because they want to know you what gotta you have. You got to get down on your knees yes. and cry. They, they want to buy your gold so you don't just show them your gold. Let them come dribbling. Let them come crawling over you, begging you. Then they're going to want to marry you because they don't know what you have. But once you give it to them, they're not going to marry to you. No. For what? And, uh, you know, um, uh, okay, a lot, a lot of, listen, ladies, what you have to understand is that when you save yourself for marriage, when you're dealing with a man, and he coming around here and he talking about having sex, having a relationship, and you say, no, um, we, we wait until we, we marry, and you hold out to that. When you marry, that guy is going to have so much respect for you. He respect you so much. Go ahead. Um, Pastor Duncan, I agree with you with what you're saying with saving sex or marriage, but there are the few cases mm -hmm. there are guys who even claim that they are Christians who would actually wait and then they got married to you and, uh, and that's it. Yeah, that's with what? They that's just want to know that they have you uh -huh. and then they just leave you. They will, they will go to any measure to prove, okay, that they could have that person. And then once they get you, get the marriage, well, you get the marriage, mm -hmm. and that's basically all you have, a piece of paper, because some of them will just leave you. Well, uh, well I guess they, are, are they on the other side? <laughs> are, are these guys on the other side? Because, I don't know, I mean, say, if you... Come, come, if you um, going behind this girl and you know this girl is so committed and stuff like that and then you finally get her to submit to you and you get married and then you um, have to walk away from that woman you probably have something that, something else in that that we don't know about maybe there, there's uh, maybe that man probably is not satisfied with something because something there probably don't cause him to be satisfied because it, when you when you have a man you have to look after him too you know and some women don't know what it, it is to look after their, their husband. You have to look after your husband. If you want to keep him, you have to look after him. You know, so um, he might, might have other reason why he probably don't want to stay. Because, uh, you know, if he's a good, committed um, Christian, I know. Because I heard and I know of cases already where things like that happen. Where men married to women, and, but they're on the other side. They, 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 they're homosexual. And uh, all, the, all this time they spend in the church, and then they just marry to this woman, and you know probably have a relationship with her a few times, and 
they just, you know, they leave. They leave. I know about that happening already. Okay. Pastor, can I say something? Marriage is a very complicated thing. You're saying a woman's supposed to withheld sex. But sometimes sex is not all a man is looking for. Even sometimes in the form mind, they think it's sex. Once they get sex from this person, or once they're into this person and they get sex, it's going to gratify them. But sometimes sex is not a whole relationship. I could admit that sex is 90% of the relationship. But sometimes sex with a woman is just sex. You understand? If a man could have sex with a woman and they're actually making love instead of just having sex, then they could feel fulfilled, gratifying. That means if you're married to somebody and the sex is not gratifying, it means that you were like two wrong persons who were fitted together. Because some men, especially you say black men, another thing that I have with black men, they, black men don't treat the woman, they don't show appreciation. So I am saying that when a black man complain, not all black men, but that's what they're saying. And if you notice in the white, um, in the white community, a white man doesn't really complain about a woman withheld themselves from them. No, if it is, it's just a minority. Because why? A white man show more appreciation to the woman, and in return, a woman show more appreciation. They, they kind of give everything to that man. But, but you see, uh, you, you might have a point there, but the thing is, the thing is, most black women use sex as a weapon. Me and my wife, uh, l- l- let me talk, uh, Sister Shani. It's true. You don't want to acknowledge it. Uh, it's true. Most black women use sex as a, as a weapon. You and your wife have a little argument. It might not be anything serious, but because of the fact that you probably wasn't deciding to do what she say or you didn't listen to her or you, whatever, um, you know, she's going to put up, uh, there's a restriction. You can't touch her. You know, you can't, whatever. They, they use, you guys have a habit of using sex as a weapon and it's wrong. Can You're I, not can I to respond that. to that? I and, said and that maybe too. If you, anytime, anytime you start using sex as a weapon, it make a man get angry. You want to see a guy get angry? You want to see a guy don't care about family, don't care about no wife, he don't care about nobody, and he just become lackadaisical in his attitude? You start to withhold sex from him for a long period of time. You, you send him, you drive him, you push him right over the cliff. And you guys are master for doing things like that, and you need to stop. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that we as men, we're perfect. A lot of us, we are rotten. And we probably deserve it at times. But are you using that weapon too long? And it's not supposed to. You're not supposed to use that. And the Bible gives us clear um, uh, um, instruction where that is concerned. Any, any woman that using sex as a weapon, they're sinning against God. You're sinning against God. And um, it's not something that we're supposed to do. Anytime um, there's any kind of a restriction or limitation on sex, it had to be in agreement with the husband. The husband had to have some input on that. If you're sick oh or whatever, uh, you know, you, you want to maybe have a, a, a week or two of fasting, you know, like some of these uh, prayer warriors, as they call themselves in the church, want to go on a whole month of fasting and uh, the, the husband, they're suffering and you know, when he tried to touch them, he said, take your hand, sanctify hand off of me. Yeah. And all of these kind of things. And you had to wait until a whole month done before you can touch your wife. That is crazy. You're not fasting to God. It's sin. It, 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 it's sin. And, and those things are to stop. Pastor, I do agree that women use sex against men, whether white or black. It, it, it's just a differentiate of that. But what I'm saying, if the especially for the black community, black men are just having sex with their wife. And I'm saying in a relationship, you're supposed to have more than sex, not just sex. And if a black man treat a woman in the right way, then they will get more than that. Then they don't have to put up themselves and all that. And another thing, Pastor, I am saying that it's my body, right? If I don't feel like having sex, I know I'm not married. If I don't feel like having sex, should I like, like go somewhere in my mind and just leave the body there for the husband? I am just a dead. He might as well go to the morgue. Yeah, but... Uh- Sister, sister, Shani. It's, it's, it's not right, Pastor. Sister, everybody, everybody have a mind. And everybody, you know, have um, common sense. You want to tell me as a man, you know, if you approach your, your wife and you see that nothing not happening and, you know, but it's not something she do all the time. It, it's not like some women already use that as an excuse. Oh, I'm not in the mood. If you use it, I'm not in the mood all the time. Every night, I'm not in the mood. I'm not, I'm not in the mood. mood. That man knows something is up. But if, if you, you know, you regularly um, are available for your husband and then, you know, one night you're not up to it, 
He have to understand that. Right. You know, but we, some of these ladies, they, they, they're never in the mood. They're never in the mood. So that's what we're talking about. Anyway, we have to close. Time is gone. Um, I was hoping that we, um, I guess we saved the end, the, the best for the end, for the last. So we will close there for today. And um, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe we might continue a little bit next week if, if God's uh, permit. All right, praise the Lord. We, um, we bow before the Lord. Someone asked the Lord's blessing as we close. Praise the Lord. Amen.